Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Canadian Shield, your trusted source for analysis. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. Pierre Polyev did a small press release, and he was talking about the behavior of Jagmeet Singh and how he said one thing and did another, and Jagmeet went ahead and lied directly into the faces of the voters so that he could get them to have sympathy with his position. And then as soon as they, he no longer needed them, he tossed them aside. He kind of makes a valid point, but I think that what this video is about is how when the press was looking for him to sort of jump in and create drama and create clickbait, Pierre Polyev didn't rise to the occasion. He didn't make some long-winded explanations. He didn't move around the entire question like it was uh, changing houses or something. He just simply said directly the answer to the question. And I don't know about you, and I don't know what your politics are, but I can promise you that uh, there's a lot to be said for a person who just tells you the answer. You might not like to hear it, but it sure beats tap dancing and games and half words and all the splitting of the truth, all that stuff. So before we get into this video, though, I would ask you to like, comment, and subscribe. Share this video with all of your socials. Give it a thumbs up because it will help the algorithm push back against the censorship of the liberal government give it a thumbs up because every time you do it tells justin trudeau that you don't agree with his policies all right let's let him say his piece and then i'll tell you why i think this video is a good great big huge burn on jagmeet singh well jagmeet singh has done it again first singh sold out the people of canada to sign on to a costly carbon tax coalition that taxed your food, doubled your housing costs, punished your work, and unleashed crime in your community. But then, on the eve of losing a by-election in a Winnipeg NDP stronghold, he went to Winnipeggers and he looked them in the eye. He said he had torn up the carbon tax coalition. Well, as soon as the votes were counted and he no longer needed the, the people of Winnipeg, he betrayed them. He taped back together the carbon tax coalition agreement and he sold them out again. It was a big Hollywood production in which he announced the end to the carbon tax coalition, but it was all a lie. Jagmeet Singh is a fake a phony, a fraud, and a liar. And the people of Canada cannot trust anything that he says going forward. There will be a carbon tax election where, where common sense conservatives will propose to ax the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. It's time for the Bloc and the NDP to stop boosting carbon taxes and protecting this costly Prime Minister and allow Canadians to vote in a carbon tax election so Canadians can choose to ax the tax and bring home a common sense government. Thank you. Is there anything stopping the Conservatives from bringing forward more non-confidence motions on your future oppo days? Just the Liberals giving us one. Don't you guys get them pretty frequently? Um, yeah. Seems like they come up pretty often, so what's stopping you from doing this in, say, a month again. The Bloc has said they aren't ruling out, uh, they aren't ruling out uh, voting down the government in the future if they don't see improvements on things like supply management. So could you revisit this in, say, December? If we get one, we will. We want a carbon tax election as soon as possible so that we can ax Trudeau's tax before he quadruples it to 61 cents a litre. Do you worry a quick fall election would, uh, would tap resources from, or zap resources from the uh, BC, your counterparts in BC, Saskatchewan, New Brunswick? No. Thank you so much. Um, so one more question. Sir. Uh, just regarding the, the video and the protesters uh, couple, earlier this week, mm -hmm. I'm just curious how you feel Mr. Singh handled the whole situation that we saw in video. Um, I'll leave it to others to judge. Thank you. <laughs> I will leave it to others to judge. I want you to think of all the times the conservative, the liberal, the NDP, and the bloc slammed any conservative for something that they didn't approve of. 
Think of all the times they passed the buck and saying, well, I might have voted against it, but the conservatives made me mad. And then think of the, the class it took to say, well, I'll leave it to others to judge and simply walk away from the question completely without, ever, without answering one way or the other. I mean, it's not like he, he has any issues criticizing Jagmeet Singh. The entire first half of the uh, um, scrum was all about how Jagmeet Singh lied directly to the voters, that he deceived them, that he, you know, and he told, he said he's a fraud, he's a fake, he's a phony. And then asked well, what he thought about it. He just said, well, I'll leave it to others to judge. <laughs> and then, you know, that must have really bothered the NDP because when um, Polya was in the uh, House of Commons, Jagmeet was challenging. Inside the House, Jagmeet was challenging him to a fist fight. The guy is losing it. I don't think Jagmeet's prepared for the criticism that he's getting. I don't think that his personality can handle it. A lot of people on the far left can't handle any criticism. That's why they're so in love with censorship. They don't want you to criticize them, but they want to be able to criticize you. Insidious. It's not a good, uh, it's not good for the common people. Common people, the ones that are, want to be able to say what they think and think what they say. I mean, that's all there is to it. I have found that the um, way that Pierre Polyev just said no directly, the guy asked him if he was going to try and do it again in a month. You know, the reporter stands up there talking about like how another 60, 90, 120 days is no big deal. It doesn't bother him at all. It's not, a, it's not impacting that guy in any way, shape or form because he's, he's got an in with the federal government. He's on the side of the far left. So they, of course, will throw all kinds of corruption his way. But those of us that are trying to get by, those of us that are just want life to go the way that it is, those of us just want to have a good quality of life, want to not have to worry about our government trying to drain the very lifeblood from us. Well, we want an election now. We don't want to wait another year. We don't want to wait another year while Mark Carney and Christia Freeland drain all of the resources and set up legislation that favors Mark Carney's three or four businesses he's up to now. First, it was housing that goes right in Mark Carney's pocket. Anyway, that's a different video. This one, I just wanted to show that despite what everybody says, right? Pierre Paul, you have, he knows how to have composure. He knows how to be direct. He knows how to say what, what he's thinking, despite you liking it or not liking it. He doesn't dodge and weave. He just says what he means and he means what he says. And I ask you right now, after 10 years practically of the far left pretending to do one thing and saying another, which one does appeal to you? Which one do you think is better for your life? No matter where you fall on the political spectrum, how can you think that somebody telling you a half truth is going to be good for your future? Anyway, I'm going to wrap here. I want to thank you all for listening. I'll talk to you next time.